Hallelujah. Matthew, the 20th chapter, verse, verse 29, and we'll be reading through verse 34. Have you ever read something, and maybe I'm just dumb, but have you ever read the word of the Lord and you pass by certain scriptures and you just kind of read over them without really getting the message? And, and maybe all of you have read this story and God gave you the message and, and the messages that I'm going to talk about here today. So if that's the case, don't tune me out. Just join in with me and preach with me. But I feel like God gave me some messages as I was reading through this portion yet again on probably the eighth or ninth time, whatever the case may be. As I started to read this, it's like the Lord started to open up and yield the fruits of the word to me. So I'm going to share that with you this morning if that's okay. Matthew, the 20th chapter, starting with verse 29, it says this, And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard, somebody say heard, when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us. O Lord, thou son of David. And verse 31 says, The multitude rebuked them because they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? And they say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be open. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. And immediately, somebody say immediately, their eyes received sight and they followed him. Yeah, the New Living Translation, verses 31 or 30 and 31 says it this way. Two blind men were sitting beside the road when they heard, somebody say heard, that Jesus was coming that way. When they heard that Jesus was coming, they began shouting, Lord, thou son of David, have mercy on us. Be quiet. Silence, the crowd yelled at them, but they only shouted louder. Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. And just for a few moments this morning, I want to preach on this title. Don't silence me. I don't know what the crowd is in your life right now. I don't know what the multitude is doing around you, but don't silence me. Don't silence my voice. Don't silence my song. Don't silence me. Amen? If you would, put your Bibles down to your side. Lift your hands toward heaven. And I want us to pray that God would anoint us this morning. I want us to lift our voice. God, that you would anoint our ears to receive your word, what you have for us, God. Talk to us, Jesus. Be with us, God. Continue to have liberty in this place, I pray. Let your word go forth without hesitation, Jesus. With unction of the Holy Ghost, we pray. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Clap your hands and magnify him. Amen. Thank you for standing with me. You may be seated. Jesus was in the presence of a great crowd of people following him as he and his disciples left the city of Jericho. And some in this great multitude of of people followed him because of food. And there were others that followed him because of love. And there were some in the crowd that followed him out of curiosity. And uh, there were some in this great press of people that followed him because of the expectation of his temporal reign. Amen. 
And, and most in those days, as we've read uh, in the past, knew of Jesus. They, they knew who Jesus was, and uh, they saw, they saw with their very eyes uh, his miraculous works. Uh, and I imagine that he was probably approached on many occasions by many who needed healing because they saw what Jesus did. Uh, I imagine that there were some that came to him uh, who needed deliverance and uh, restoration because they observed what Jesus did to folks uh, healing their bodies and setting them free. Amen. They saw his miraculous works. They saw the miracles. And in my younger years, uh, in, in maybe in my ignorance, I, I would often ask the Lord, God, show me a miracle. I want to see the miraculous with my eyes. With my eyes, I want to see the dead raised. And I want to see the deaf ear opened. And I want to see the blind eyes opened. Amen? Maybe to increase my faith. But the Lord, and I don't know how he talks to you, but he's very blunt with me. Amen. When he speaks to me, I believe. And he brought me to remembrance. Oh, Brother Baca, you want to you wanna see, but I'm going to show you in Romans 10 and 17. Uh, he says, so then faith uh, cometh by hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. And these blind men, they could not see, obviously. Their disability prevented them from seeing the miracles that Christ had performed. They weren't able to see what others saw. They weren't able to see as Jesus raised someone. They weren't able to, to catch a glimpse of that. Amen? But as they sat by the wayside here begging for alms, amen, they had heard of his workings. They had heard of the miraculous. They have heard of the things that others had saw. See, blindness had heightened their sense of hearing. And on that busy roadway, amen, I could imagine because they were beggars, they had to be at a busy place, right, to collect alms. But I imagine on this busy roadway that they heard the conversations of those passing by the way. They heard the stories of this one from Nazareth. What good can come from Nazareth? Amen. They heard about uh, uh, this insignificant uh, peasant teenager that came from an insignificant Amen. Village uh, who had this insignificant baby boy uh, who came to save the world uh, from their sins. They heard of this baby boy being born in a manger. Who is this Jesus, uh, they asked. Uh, who is this Jesus we keep hearing people talk about uh, as they come by the way in this roadside? Uh, amen. Who is this Jesus uh, that turned the water into wine at a wedding? Amen. Who is this Jesus uh, that healed Peter's mother? Amen. Who was sick with the fever? And as beggars, as beggars seeking money, and poor, I imagine that they intentionally, somebody say intentionally, they intentionally placed themselves in a heavily congested roadway full of pedestrian traffic. And as they sat there, they overheard some talking about this Jesus. They overheard some talking about this miracle worker. Ah, they overheard. Amen. The scripture about that tells us that at sunset, uh, those who had various kinds of sicknesses and uh, and all manner of, of possession and oppression, they were brought to him. Uh, amen. And by the laying on of his hands, uh, he began to heal them, uh, and he healed them all. And as people passed by, I imagine they started to hear other stories. Uh, 
They most likely heard of how Jesus healed a man that was stricken with leprosy. Amen. Something that was not curable. But they heard of this Jesus who stretched forth his hand and healed a man of leprosy. And I imagine that on another occasion as, as people were passing by, they heard of how he healed a, a centurion servant of complete paralysis. They overheard some talking about how this Jesus healed a paralytic who was let down to him through a roof because the house was too full. So his friends picked him up. He couldn't walk. He couldn't move. But his friends had faith for him. So his friends picked him up and let him down through a roof. That's the stories that they heard. They, they, they probably heard as people were passing by how, how Jesus healed a man's withered hand and then he raised the widow's dead son from the dead. Who is this man that even the winds and the sea obey him? They probably heard of this storm that was shaking the boat back and forth. All of a sudden, Jesus comes out and rebukes the wind and rebukes the waves and they listen to him. Raise the dead. Amen. Hallelujah. You probably heard of the two possessed uh, uh, with devils who approached him from the tombs, uh, crying out to him, uh, and Jesus sets them uh, free. Uh, they heard uh, the story of Jairus. Oh, Jairus, uh, who pleaded with Jesus. Uh, he pleaded about his sick daughter. And before Jesus arrives at the house, uh, all these things begin to happen. Uh, and as he gets to the house, we know the story. He's told it's too late. She's already dead. That's the first part of the story that they heard. And then they heard the second part of the story, that how time was not a factor with him. Amen. Jesus walks into this house, and he starts to move people out the room. Get out the room. Just me and her. Me and her are going to be in the room. And as they were sitting there, I believe that they started to hear the scatter of a 12-year-old little girl walking around, and Jesus raises her from the dead. A side note, doesn't matter who's in the room with you as long as Jesus is in the room with you. Doesn't matter who, what friend or family member is with you. As long as Jesus is in the house with you, all things are possible. That's another, that's another sermon. Maybe next time. Any miracles? Any miracles? Miracles, signs, wonders. Come into their hearing as they sat by the side of the road. So then faith cometh by what? Hearing. Amen. They sat there. They listened. And they heard of this Jesus from, from Nazareth and Galilee and all these places where people were being healed and delivered. But most importantly, they were being saved. What's more important than salvation? Than us being saved and us getting to heaven. What's more important than that? Yeah, they heard of all these miracles, but possibly the greatest miracle is that, yeah, folks were healed. But then they began to follow him after they were healed. And God began to save them and bring them into his eternal kingdom. They could not see. But their faith began to grow as they heard the stories of the miracle worker. And how many times uh, have we asked this question, God, show us a miracle? And I'm talking to this church right now. How many times have you come into this place? Uh, God, I want to see uh, a miracle. All the time ignoring what we're hearing and how, how many victory reports uh, are read from this pulpit uh, and how many healings uh, are heard from this pulpit. Might not be right here, but we prayed for Grandpa and we prayed for Grandma and God healed them uh, and God set them free. Uh, so then by faith cometh by what?
speed in their request. Two blind men. In the other accounts, if you read in the other Gospels, we actually identify one of the blind men, right, as blind Bartimaeus. And for whatever reason, Matthew's account, which I probably like a little better, doesn't mention Bartimaeus by name. I don't understand why that is. And I have some thoughts that maybe, because if you look into some of the scholars and what they wrote, wrote or written about blind Bartimaeus, it is probably because he comes from a rich family. There's a name there. It talks about who his father is in, in the other Gospels. But in this gospel, it doesn't identify who he is because regardless of where you came from and regardless of how much money you have and regardless of who you are and what your pedigree is, they both needed a touch from the Lord. They both needed a touch from the master. Doesn't matter how much money you have. Doesn't matter if you come from the other side of the tracks. Doesn't matter if you come from South Phoenix. We all need a touch from him. We all need a blessing from him. We all need to be saved. Read together in their request. Together in their petition. There is, there, there, there is something pleasing to God. That when we join together as a church and we begin to cry out to him in one mind and one accord, and they were sitting here in their misery, and they agreed together that if, if this Jesus comes passing by, we're going to call out to him. We're going to get our miracle. Amen? Jesus said in Matthew 18 and 19, Matthew 18 and 19, again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall, it shall, it shall, it shall, it shall, it shall be done for them. Amen. And I want us to agree together that God's going to move into this place and touch us today. I want us to agree together that God's going to bring healing into this house, that God's going to bring anointing into this house. Amen. And it shall, it shall, it shall be done. Tap your hands and magnify him. Is this all right? Amen. They were joint sufferers, joint suitors, partners, same suffering. Uh, partners, same pain. Partners in the same infirmity. They were companions in the same trial. It didn't matter the background. They were both blind. Uh, it didn't matter who they were or who their families were. They were both blind. And it is good for those of us that are struggling under the same sickness or calamity of the body and mind to join together in prayer to God for relief, that we may quicken each other in our fervency and in our urgency and encourage one another's faith. Can I speak on a side note right now? We have a lost and dying world right now. I think we need to pray together that God would use us and use Souls Harbor to reach out to the neighborhoods that surround this place uh, because there are people that are hurting and people that are dying and there are people that are suffering and we have the answer. We have the answer today. Amen. There is enough mercy. There is enough mercy in Christ for all that petition him. There is enough mercy in him for your need this morning, there is enough healing in him. God doesn't run out of mercy. God doesn't run out of healing power. God doesn't run out of anointing. He doesn't run out. It's every day. There's something new. Amen. And if you need something today, God hasn't run out. And God hasn't forgotten you. He wants to heal you. He wants to touch you. He wants to restore you. He wants to deliver you. Hallelujah. There is enough mercy in Christ. Think about this. 
they were liberal. They were intentional in their placement on the roadway. Beggars. Uh, they were purposeful in where they placed themselves at that time, right? They needed alms, but this day was different. They heard all the stories of who this Jesus was. They had heard everything that I had mentioned uh, earlier on, but there was something different on this day. Uh, the word on the street, the, the, the buzz, the commotion was just a little bit more than it normally was, uh, indicating something was stirring, something was happening. There was an expectation in the air. There was an anticipation. Amen. Jesus is coming. Amen. That's what they heard. They probably heard somebody say, somebody scattering by. They, no, they, they weren't getting alms today, but they keep hearing footsteps. He's coming. He's coming by. He's coming on this roadway. He's coming this way. Jesus is coming. Jesus, that's what, he, that's what they're hearing. Jesus is coming. And they could hear the roar of the crowd. They were intentional. Amen. They were deliberate where they placed themselves. So we're going to stand right here because the one that's coming, the one has the ability to heal us and the ability to deliver us and to set us free and to help us see. He's coming. Jesus is coming. for us to understand that those of us who need mercy, come on somebody, those of us who need him, must place ourselves where he manifests himself to those that seek him. They knew Jesus was coming, so I'm going to sit right here until I get my miracle. I'm going to sit right here I know he's passing by this way. I'm going to sit right here. I can't see him, but I can hear. And I know he's coming. And he's going to touch us. Uh, and he's going to bless us. Uh, and he's going to heal us. The Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please him. And we read earlier, where does faith come from? By the hearing, right? Because by the hearing of the word of God, and they kept hearing of these miracles. All of a sudden, their faith started to increase because they heard of this, this man who could heal and could set free. And they put themselves directly on the road, directly in his path. Amen. And you're in the right place today. You took a step in faith. If you need something from him, if you need a miracle in your crisis, if you need an answer to your problem, this is where he dwells. This is where he passes by. These, these blind men, I guarantee, I guarantee these blind men heard of a certain woman with an issue of blood whom the Bible says that when she had heard the reports of Jesus, she got excited because she, like these blind men, was desperate in her situation and she heard the reports of Jesus. So she got up that morning and she pushed her way through a crowd. She, she found the path that Christ was on. I got to find him. I got to find Jesus. And so she followed the crowd and the crowd was thick. And the Bible says that the crowd began to throng him, but she didn't care. She began to push her way. She began one person. She moved him out of the way. She began to, then she probably fell to her feet and she got on her knees and began to crawl to the master. Amen. And she touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus, this is the important part. Jesus said, who touched me? And the disciples were like, what do you mean? Who touched you? The crowd is, is all around you. Yeah, but there was someone desperate. There was someone desperate that needed a touch from the Lord. And she was desperate. And she pressed her way through the press of the crowd and got his attention and put herself directly on his roadway. That's desperate. That's desperate for a need right there. Twelve long years she had suffered. All that she had went to trying to heal. But when she heard of Jesus, when she heard of Jesus, she went to church. She went to go find out where Jesus was. I'm going to put myself in his path. Move out of the way. I need something from him. I need something from him. I need a miracle. I need a touch in my life. I need it.
That's what the master wants to say to you this morning. There's a crowd here right now, but he wants to turn around and say, who touched me? I don't know, Lord. The crowd, there's thousands of people that surround you, but virtue, but virtue left me. Who, who touched me? Who, who was so desperate in their, in their life? Who was so desperate in their need that they did what they had to do to put themselves on my path? Who touched me? They were intentional. They were intentional. Put themselves in a location as they heard Jesus was going to pass. They were, they were intentional. These, these blind men, I told you, maybe you've heard this story. Maybe you understand. But God was revealing this to me, that they were deliberate. They weren't just blind men just collecting alms. No, they had heard of Jesus. So they intentionally placed their, themselves and set themselves on the road where Jesus was come by because I need something. More than you, my friend. More than you, my brother. I'm willing to do more than you. Amen. If you're just going to sit there, I'm going to go press through the crowd because I need Jesus. I need him in my life. I need him in my family and my sons and my daughter. I need him in my church. And when they when they heard, when they heard Jesus approaching, can you imagine after hearing what we hear and in experiencing what we experience, and maybe we become familiar with it. I, and maybe just that's just me, okay? Maybe we become familiar, but there's a soul that comes to our church, and all of a sudden they hear about, I've heard about this Jesus. And then they start to feel something. They start to hear, oh, these people are praising the Lord. I wonder why. I wonder why they're, well, I need something from him. So I, must, I better just cry out. I better just cry out. And when they heard that Jesus was approaching, they didn't ask any more questions. They didn't, it didn't matter who was with, who's with them. It doesn't matter. Or was he in a hurry? It doesn't matter. When they heard Jesus approaching, nothing else mattered. Didn't matter if he was in a hurry. Didn't matter if people were with them. They straight away cried out, and they took advantage of the opportunity. 14-plus miracles had potentially come into their hearing. 14-plus miracles as they sat there. They had probably heard of all these things that Jesus did, so they believed. They believed. They believed. Their faith was increased, so they seized the moment. This Jesus can heal us. This Jesus can restore our sight. Don't let us slip away today. I have a word for you. Right now, every single one in this house sees the moment. Sees the moment. Take advantage of, of the miracle worker that's passing through here right now. Amen. He's not at the, he's a, he's right here right now in Souls Harbor Church. I believe, I take the Bible as literal. That when we, when we begin to praise that God inhabits the praises of his people, we've been praising him. I know for sure that God is here. I can feel him. So Souls Harbor Church, seize the moment. Take advantage of the opportunity. Let it slip away. And it may never return. Because we find in this, this scripture that Jesus never never made his way back to the city of Jericho. That was their moment. They, that was, oh, they, they heard he was passing by. This is my moment. This is the opportunity. He's never going to come by this way again. I'm not going to lose this moment. I'm not going to let it slip by me. I need something right now. Right now. I need something right now. I'm not going to let this slip by. I'm going to seize the opportunity. I'm going to take advantage of it right now. I'm not a fear preacher. I don't believe in preaching fear, but we could leave this place today and, and never breathe another breath of life if we walk out here, get into our vehicle, and, and God forbid that God takes us or decides that's the end. That's the end of our life. Amen. If, if for whatever reason, we get on the freeway and we're, we're taken in a car accident. I got to seize the moment right now. Salvation, today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Jesus has come to save right now. 
almost done. You can be seated for just a few more moments. I don't believe in coincidence. I don't, I don't, I don't believe in coincidence. Amen. Do you believe in coincidence? I don't. I don't believe in happenstance, that Jesus, that things just happen for a reason. I don't believe in that. I believe that if you are here today that God ordained it, you've put yourself on his path. If you're in the house today, it's because you've deliberately and intentionally, like these blind men, put yourself on his path. So don't leave this place without touching the hem of his garment. Don't leave this place without your miracle this morning. Don't leave this place without your blessing. Don't leave this place without your breakthrough. Don't leave this place without your deliverance or restoration. But you better seize the moment. Take advantage of Christ being here. Seize the moment. Have mercy. Have mercy on us. They cried. They cried aloud. Have mercy on us, O oh God. They didn't, they didn't specify their immediate need, their, their, their immediate need of healing, of sight, but they cast himself on his mercy. They didn't just say, God, heal us. No, they said, oh, oh, Lord, thou son of David, have mercy on us. They asked not for silver or for gold, though they were poor and though they were beggars, but mercy, only have mercy. Oh, Lord. That's the first things that came out of their, out of their mouths. See, they didn't, they, before this time, they'd only heard of the miraculous. But they said this, oh, Lord, what did they do right there with that statement? They acknowledged and they confessed that Jesus Christ is Lord. They had heard of his power. They had heard of his ability. And now they believed that that's God manifesting the flesh. Oh, Lord, thou son of David, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. They cried out. But the crowd rebuked them and bid them to hold their peace. Be silent. Be quiet. Do not disturb the master. Now I'm going to preach. We, we as a church, are living in a time of the hush. Amen. We are living in a season right now, more than ever, where people are trying to keep us quiet. They're, they're doing their best to subdue and to silence our voice and our voices. They're doing their best to muzzle our praise and put a, and put a muzzle on our worship. Amen. Hallelujah. We're in a season right now where politicians and government officials are trying to suppress the cry of our churches and the people of God. Amen. The crowd around us and the mob and the protest and the multitude, they're endeavoring to hush the mouth of the church. It's for us. It's okay for us to gather and protest, but the church has to be quiet. The church has to meet in their houses. I'm hitting something right now. That's okay. You want to demonstrate your freedom? By all means, do that. But let me come and worship my God. Don't try to silence my mouth. Don't, don't silence me. They're trying. They're trying the best to hush the mouth of the church. But don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And right now, more than ever, there are dominions, there are demonic powers that are working against your vocal cords and trying to shut your mouth. There are devils that are contending. They're fighting to shut down our churches and limit our gatherings, establishing laws to suppress our singing and our worship. They tried that in California. Oh, you can go to church, but you can't sing. You can't open your mouth. They're trying to shut your voice. They're trying to shut your praise. They're trying to shut your preaching. But I submit to us today that I will not be silenced. I will not be silenced. The crowd tried to silence these blind men. They began to cry out. They believed. They heard of the miracles. Oh, Jesus, thou son of David, shut up. Be silent. He don't have time for you. What the Bible tells us in Isaiah 58, this is what the Bible says. It says, cry aloud. 
Lift up thy voice uh, like a trumpet. Uh, don't be timid. Uh, don't be ashamed. But shout with the voice uh, of a trumpet blast. Uh, lift up your voice uh, and shout it to God. How desperate are you for a miracle this morning? Are you just going to be silent? Or are you going to cry out? Are you going to let the multitude try to silence your mouth? I wish, I wish somebody would hear me in the Holy Ghost today. You can't afford to hold your peace. We can't afford as a church to be silenced, muted, censored in this season. You can't afford to be silent in your situation. You can't afford to be silent in the midst of your storm. You can't afford to be silent in the midst of your sickness and your infirmities. You can't afford to be quiet when your children and your grandchildren and your family members are lost. I contend that you need to let your voice be heard. We can't just sit back uh, and allow chaos uh, and all kinds of confusion and all kinds of demonic activity to quiet us down. Uh, but I've come by divine assignment uh, and, anoint you, and anointing uh, to encourage you to cry louder, shout louder, shout louder, cry louder. Doesn't matter who's in the room, speak up, uh, open up your mouth uh, and cry over the crowd and the rebuke of the mob. Have mercy on us. You got to cry louder. We got to speak louder. We got to yell louder. We're living in a day where people are trying their best to silence our mouth and put us on mute. But I don't care who's in my way. I don't care what type of place or environment I'm in, whether I'm in the midst of family or friends or in the midst of co workers. I'm going to let my voice be heard. You got to cry louder. I know some of you have been praying and some of you have been seeking the Lord. You've been crying. You've been searching for him. God, I need you. But God wants me to tell you right now, you need to cry louder. You need to pray louder. You need to seek him more. You need to cry out till your voice gives out if need be. They were blind. Close your eyes for a minute. They were blind. They were blind. They didn't have the luxury of seeing the colors that we're seeing this morning. We didn't have the ability to see what we see right now, what you see right now, the darkness, this, what they saw, darkness. And some of us today are sitting right here. Hold your eyes, won't you? Because there are some in this house right now that are sitting in this darkness right here. But I imagine as Jesus began walking down the road, that maybe it, it got quiet in their ears just like this. And just maybe that, just maybe, and I don't have scripture for this, but maybe in the darkness they begin to see a light. Maybe in this place right here of darkness they begin to see the light. They were in desperate need of a healing. And they didn't allow the, the crowd, they didn't allow their friends, they didn't allow their present circumstance to prevent them from calling on the name of the Lord. And when they called initially on the name of the Lord, the crowd rebuked them. But after a second time, the Bible says that Jesus stood still. Let me tell you what I think that means, all right? Let me tell you what I think that means. I think. I think he heard their first cry. But it was their second cry that got his attention. That, that, that's powerful to me. I think that 
he was walking and he heard the first cry and he, over the somebody was crying for him, but he wanted to see how desperate they were for a miracle. So he probably kept walking. It was the second cry that got his attention. And he stood still. And he probably looked back and he says, that's what I was waiting for. The desperate cry. And that's what he's waiting for this morning, your second cry of desperation for him right now. You, you've been, you, you have been struggling with things for years, some of you in this place today. You have been suffering with whatever you've been suffering. I'm no prophet, so I don't know. But I, I know that in, 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 this, in this type of group setting, there are folks here that have been struggling and fighting for things for years. And you've allowed your present circumstance and you've allowed your present condition to affect your praise to affect your worship. You've allowed depression to creep in. You've allowed oppression to creep in and to silence you. You've allowed these things to damper your joy, to take away your peace and your happiness. Amen. But it's not only the, the voices of the crowd that are outside, but some of you are dealing with voices in your head and dealing with a cold. Some of you are dealing with a mob in a crown in your head telling you you're not good enough. You're insignificant. Amen. You'll never amount to nothing. You're, you're not even dealing with voices around you. You're dealing with voices in your inside of your mind saying you'll never amount to nothing. What effect will you have on the kingdom? There is no point to what you're doing, but I come against that in the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, telling you that you are significant to the kingdom of God. And God is saying right now, cry louder, shout louder. God's calling you right now. He wants to hear that second cry. He already heard you the first time, but he wants you to get his attention. You want Jesus to be still? Cry out. Cry louder. Cry over the crowd. Cry over the mob. Shout louder. Desperation is, 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 is a breeding ground for deliverance. Desperation is a breeding ground for, for restoration. They were distressed and they then God heard them. He heard their desperate cry and the desperation in their voice. So he stood still and said, What should I do with you? He said, Don't stop. That's the sickness. He touched their infirmity. He touched their addiction. He touched whatever they were going through because they cried out a second time. Because they got his attention, he stood still, turns back and says, what do you want me to do? Just heal me. Have mercy on me, O son. I believe already. Just heal me of whatever I'm going through. And heal me whatever battle I'm fighting right now. <laughs> 